Hello PC Hardware Land, this is Jacob and Dave, back for another PC Games N Hardware Show. Yes, and it's all about these shiny slabs of circuitry this week as we take a look at these Z390 motherboards before us. So these motherboards all launched on Monday and we put them through our test bench to see how they shake out against last year's Z370 boards. These new motherboards are destined for greater things, specifically 8-core processors by the name of the i9-9900K and the i7-9700K. But with backwards compatibility across all Coffee Lake chips enabled, these Z390 boards can also be paired with any 8th gen chip and last year's Z370 with any 9th gen chip. And that means the market for motherboards is temporarily at least wider than ever. But should you opt for the latest Z390 chipset or stick with the tried and tested Z370 motherboards from yesteryear? The Z390 chipset itself offers only a modicum of upgrades over the Z370 chipset. There's actually only been two functional upgrades made within Intel's platform management chip, both of which won't alone be convincing enough for gamers. Yeah, the first is the inclusion of Intel's own Wi-Fi controller baked into the chipset itself. That means the motherboard manufacturers don't need to add any extra controllers onto the board. Instead, all that is required is the physical circuitry and an I.O. to connect it all up. The second is USB 3.1 Gen 2. Woo! Just like Wi-Fi, <laughs> this functionality has been around for a while on most mid to high-end motherboards through the use of third-party controllers, most notably one made by AS Media. All the important specs such as PCIe lanes and bandwidth remain the same, or as ASUS Senior Product Manager Mark Chen described the native changes coming to the Z390, that's it. Convinced yet? Yeah, me thought not. With little functionality included from the latest chipset, motherboard manufacturers such as ASUS and Gigabyte have found the job of convincing gamers to splash out on the very latest motherboards has fallen squarely on their shoulders. Most of the Neoteric functionality on these motherboards is a result of ASUS and Gigabyte's own implementations, resulting in new functionality such as AI overclocking, suitably acquiescing to 2018's favourite buzzword. This is ASUS's attempt to make your motherboard smarter. Whether you wanted it or not, motherboards are thinking for themselves like a second-rate mini hell, and now have the ability to rate your CPU silicon potential for overclocking prowess. What are you doing, Dave? It's useful guidance too, even if only as a starting point to tweak speeds further. Realistically, however, the specs remain largely the same and massively dependent on how much money you're willing to spend on a new motherboard. As most functionality is now due to proprietary chips and unique design traits, the specs list of these new boards can be as indulgent or minimal as you prefer. But none of those extra specs make all that difference when it comes to performance improvements, of which we saw little to none. Even at the best of times, motherboards make little difference to actual real-world performance, with synthetic benchmarks the only way to highlight marginal differences between boards. The difference between the Z370 and the Z390 chipset is marginal at best, and non-existent at worst. There's little to no difference between any of the major boards aside from the Mini-ITX form factor that falls ever so slightly behind in some benchmarks. Many of the important components that used to make motherboards a key consideration for performance hounds have since been moved over to the CPU itself, leaving these sheets of PCB largely all about features, connectivity and overclocking chops. We can't yet speak for the 8-core performance, but unless overclocking performance is drastically different between the two chipsets, it's all going to come down to price in the end. With performance little to write home about, and specs you may or may not give two hoots about, it all comes down to price. Yeah, and for the most part, the MSRP of the Z390 boards has been set at around the same price that the equivalent Z370 boards were when they launched about a year ago. However, these Z370 motherboards have dropped in price over the last 12 months, lending to a small but not insignificant pricing disparity between the generations of relatively similar motherboards. We have heard also that ASUS will be maintaining a supply of 22 nanometer Z370 motherboards due to fears of Intel's manufacturing shortage affecting its supply chain for the 14 nanometer Z390 chipset. Intel has been under increasing pressure lately due to growing manufacturing constraints affecting its 14 nanometer fabs. Intel interim CEO Bob Swan recently released an open letter in an attempt to address the tumultuous rumours and outline mitigations to combat the worrying shortage. That includes an extra $1 billion of investment funds back into the company's fabs. Shortages could well affect Intel's CPUs too. Last year when reports of Intel's 14 nanometer shortages were fewer and far between, the Coffee Lake launch was still marred with supply woes. Those didn't ease up until around November or December, and it wouldn't be all that surprising, if not more likely due to the flurry of reports on Intel supply hardships as of late, for a similar set of events to occur this year. In that case, the Z370 fending off displacement by the Z390 could remain the best value board for the 8th gen until the situation changes over at Intel. 
Z390 will surely become the motherboard of choice for any new gaming PC built around a brand new 8-core processor, but for hexa-core chips and below, it's not going to be worth the investment. As long as stock doesn't fall prey to the shortages over at Intel, these motherboards should drop in price as the new year rolls around, however, at which time you'll likely have little choice in the matter, with manufacturers likely to be swiftly cutting off Z370 supply to retailers and making the change to Z390 for good. But with Z390 at risk of Intel's manufacturing deficit, the last-gen motherboards might stick around a little longer, despite their planned obsolescence. With identical performance, spec lists that make for a tough game of spot the difference, and cheaper pricing, these year-old motherboards could offer the best performance and feature set for your dollar for the time being. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like and hit the subscribe button for more in both gaming and PC hardware. Also, check out PCGamesN.com for the very latest in PC gaming. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!